Thank you, Needy. Thank you, Needy. Thank you. I'll tell you, it is always a pleasure to have Dee Dee here in the studio with us. And now, for that weather report, we're going to go out there to the middle of the field with Harold Dean Latimer. Hello, Harold Dean. Are you out there? What's it going to be? Well, it's going to be a little bit of everything. Got a lot of rain coming in from the north and the west and the east and a little bit from the south, and that should clear off by mid-morning. And by noon, it should be on hot, hot and humid. And we're expecting about 100, 101. And now for the afternoon, we got these possible dust storms coming out from West Texas. They could be severe, and they say the sky could go completely black by about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And we also got this swarm of locusts headed this way from Louisiana. Uh, but we figured the dust will kill a lot of them. The rest will either get blown away or drowned in this tropical storm that's called Luther. Now that storm's going to bring a lot of rain with it, so it's going to be wet and cloudy and miserable, and it's going to rain for several days. So get out those raincoats. Back to you, Thurston. Where? <laughs> Folks, you heard it. Rain. You know, that Harold Bean has to get up every morning about 4.30 to get these reports into us here at the station. Some mornings, we'll be driving into the studio and look out there in that field and see him standing there and God only knows what kind of weather. Yeah, I've seen him up to his neck in snow before. <laughs> yeah, do you remember that time he spotted that water spout over you Miller Pond? Picked him up and dropped him right into the county. It did. It did. And he got that report in on time anyway. He did. He did. He did. He damn sure did. Thank you, Ronnie. This just in. A UFO, that is an unidentified flying object, has just been spotted by R.R. Snavely over Lake Moby Heath. <laughs> R.R. says it looks like a giant hovering to loop up without the guacamole. <laughs> Peace talks fail, attack is imminent. Mm. Now that's all the news we've got for you, but stay tuned. Stay tuned. we got a letter on the line coming well, up. thank you, Ronnie. Well, I got a note from Ronnie. You forgot to throw the power switch. You are not on the air. <laughs>
I seen it right up there, did you? I swear I did. Sure you did, R.R. You saw a hovering chalupa. You and Mogan David. <laughs> I wasn't drinking when I sang it. Shut up! God! Damn it! <laughs> if Mama was dead and I wasn't such a hard shell Baptist, I swear to God, I'd divorce your ass. Yeah, her hips are so 
son of a bitch. He has to lay down on the bed and groan in the... Family, <laughs> we're going to find her a good diet. You better find her a good surgeon. <laughs> Stanley, will you just stop it? You get out of here before you drive me to a rubber room in Big Springs. <laughs> Charlene! Charlene! You get out of Stanley's jeans this very minute. You know your butt is too big to fit in. Uh, it breaks my heart to hurt that baby's feelings. Yeah, well, I should have known you'd take her side of it. And don't let those dogs in. Oh, stop her. Get down off of that chair. Get out that door. You know better. I just clean this house. That reporter will be here in a minute. Oh, my God. Bingo, what is that? Oh, Bingo. Did that used to be alive? You get over here and pick that up. Get, pick it up. Now get outside. Oh, get out. I swear you dogs are going to be the death of me. Charlene! <coughs> Charlene! Honey, will you hurry up? I know you're working on your poem for the radio station, but honey, your breakfast is getting cold. Mama, get up here and get this dog out of my room. Which one? Woofy. 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 Get down here right now. Oh, there you are. Come on. Oh, come on. Would you like a biscuit? Huh? Oh, wow. Come on. 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 You're going to be looking for a new home. And you're next. <laughs> Charlene, honey, would you not have a bowl of oatmeal? No. Well, how about half a biscuit? Mom. Well, maybe come sit down. Would you? <laughs> Honey, would you try a bite or two of hash brown? No, thank you. Well, here. Just have a cup of coffee. Oh, it's that 
reporter from Houston. Uh, coming. Ring. Uh, I said I was coming. Ring. Wait, you're just going to have to hold your horses. I said I was coming. Ring, ring, ring. Uh, yes, Mr. Neal. Chad Harford. Well, uh, come in, Mr. Harford. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care for anything to drink, Mrs. Buell. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Can we get right to the interview? Well, certainly. Now, you're chairing the Committee for the Textbooks of the Censorship. Am I correct? Well, no. That is the Reverend Spikes who heads that committee, although I am a member. Uh, and we're going to have a meeting this afternoon, by the way. But uh, please don't. The Reverend Spice just hates the press. I think it's because of all the old folks' homes he owns, all the terrible things that y'all said about him in the newspaper. But it looks like I'm not on the show. <laughs> but I do head the subcommittee that wants to snatch the books off the shelves of the Tonight School Library. Some of those books are disgusting. And our children have no business reading them. And someone has got to watch the minds of the children. Mr. B. Miller, before we get to the books, can you tell me what in your background qualifies you to censor library books? Well, I could briefly list my activities if you like. Please. Uh, <laughs> Well, I'm currently president of the Ladies for a Better Tuna. I am den mother for the MP2 I'm the only high C soprano in the first Baptist choir. And I'm currently recorder for the Havelina Club. That's a women's auxiliary to the Wild Hogs. Kind of a break off of the Lions Club. We just thought the Lions Club were way too big. I'm the former head of the local BBB. That's the better Baptist Bureau, too. And I'm a member of our shut in visiting squad, the Tuna Helpers. <laughs> president and co-founder of Citizens for Fewer Blacks in Literature. Thank you, Mr. Hume. I think I get the idea. Oh, well, all right. Now, what exactly are the books that you feel should be removed from the shelf? Well, now, there's four of them, and we're going to try to have them removed nationwide, and then we're going to go from there. <laughs> and what are the four books, Mr. Bill Miller? Roots. <laughs> Well, we don't deny that Roots has been a very popular TV series. We just believe it only shows one side of the slavery issue. <laughs> Go on. Bury my heart at wounded thee. Oh, that is the most disgusting title I have ever heard in my life. Makes me want to hurt. <laughs> And it vilifies a great American, General Custer. <laughs> and it would lead the reader to believe that our United States government cannot be trusted in making treaties. <laughs> What's next? Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Did he write that? Yes. <laughs> Now, that book shows a pretty teenage boy avoiding his chores, running away from home, cohorting with a Negro criminal, and putting on women's clothes. <laughs> Go on. Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> oh, pray tell, what's wrong with Romeo and 
pedophilia? Well, it just shows sex among teenagers. That's all. And we are not for that. And we're certainly not going to encourage it. And besides, it shows a rampant disrespect for parental authority. You are aware that William Shakespeare wrote that one? Oh, yes, we are. And we're looking into the rest of his stuff, too. <laughs> Did you know that he wrote barefoot in the park? <laughs> Listen, do you remember quite often these days people claim they talk to God? Do you talk to God? Well, I pray. I didn't ask you that, Mr. Do you remember I asked you if you talk to God directly? Well, no. No, I don't. But he leaves little messages for me. <laughs> well, he does. With the Reverend Spot. And second-hand messages from the Lord is good enough for me. Thank you, Mrs. Buehler. I think we've got one hell of a story. Oh, oh well, now, now don't you run off. I, I've got a whole stack of interesting things to tell you about Judah. Well, I'm sure it just boggles the mind, Mrs. Buehler, but I really must be running. Oh, well, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> what did you say the name of your magazine was? <coughs> Intellect. I don't believe we have that here in Canada. <laughs> I'll see that you get a copy. Goodbye, Mrs. Buehler. Well, goodbye. <laughs> well, I think reporters just ask the silliest questions. I'm glad he didn't ask me any more than he did. Thank God he did not ask me about my family. That Charlene, she is just all messed up over not getting cheerleader. I said, honey, honey, so down, it's going to be okay. You'll get cheerleader next year. She looked at me with tears running down her cheeks and said, Mother, I'm a senior. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to tell my only daughter she will never be a cheerleader. I don't know how to do that. Uh, and Stanley, Oh my God. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with that boy. Dating that Mexican girl. Well, he never has been right. <laughs> but Jody, now Jody, Jody's going to be okay. Even though he's surrounded by a pack of dogs. <laughs> he's going to grow out of that. I know he will. I hope. Well, at least I didn't have to lie about Hank. I have cooked and I have cleaned for that sorry son of a bitch for 27 years. No. He won't even take me to the drive-in movies. Oh, I pretend not to notice on Sunday morning as we go to church. After Saturday night, after I have smelled the perfume and seen the lipstick smears, I swear, sometimes I just wish that man would have a smoke and a swear I do. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. God, forgive me. I, I didn't mean it.
I'm just glad that word didn't pass.
four in the morning. Mama gets up at 5.30 every morning and come after she has her prunes. <laughs> when Mama hit that poor thick syrup, she will stop dead in her tracks. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that is really mean. It's not funny, Leonard. <laughs> no, no, it's not. She was out there for two and a half hours. <laughs> she watched the sun come <laughs> up. <clears throat> who could think of who could think of anything that mean? Well, I'm sure Virgil Carr was leaning on it, but I can't prove nothing. Well, that sounds exactly like something Virgil Carr would do. Well, I catch him near my house. He better have a high threshold of pain. <laughs> now, B, we all know you wouldn't hurt that boy. Hide and watch, Leonard. Hide and watch. Hey, Virgil, if you're out there <laughs> listening, I think she means business. But, Leonard, the damage is already done. I can't even pour syrup on my pancakes without... Think of that poor little lady just, just reaching for that doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Davey, settle, settle, settle down. <laughs> Not, no need to get any upset than you are. Why don't you take another one of your nerve people? I believe I will. <laughs> well, I will tell you, folks, it, it's getting so kids can't have any fun anymore. <laughs> but you know, that baby has led a really rough life down there working in that store. She got a lot to let out. So the right, we got another life. Hello, you're on the line with Lynn. Let it out. Hello, you're on the line with Lynn. Let it out. Am I? No, oh, turn that down! Turn it down, damn nation! Oh. Sorry, I forgot. This is Finest Fly. What's up, Finest? I'm calling to announce I'll be a candidate for Tuna City Council's next year election. Finest, you've been running for City Council for as long as I can remember. Why don't you just quit? Well, you know, it's funny. <laughs> In the past, my opponents have made personality a major issue. Let's face it. In a personality contest, I'm always going to lose. I mean, I'm boring. I was born in Indiana, and some people just naturally seem to hate me. Well, you're right about that, fun. <laughs> but this year, I'm injecting new and vital issues that cannot be ignored by the voters. Did you know, for example, there are thousands of citizens who pay no taxes whatsoever? Well, like who? Like welfare mothers and prisoners. They don't pay none. No. And it'd be easy to tax the prisoners because we know exactly where they are. <laughs> well, you got a good idea there, Finest. And we wish you the best of luck this time around. Well, you only have to win once. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, folks, there goes a man ahead of his own time. You know, Finus has been running for city council for now on go. 16 years. He never made it to first base. But we wish you the best of luck. Hang in there, Finus. All right. Hello. You're on the line with Glenn. Let it out. Glenn, Stanley, you know it here. Stanley, what do you want? You keep it clean. Uh, I was just listening to that last phone caller. <laughs> it seems to me if the government was looking to tax something, why don't they put a tax on stupidity? <laughs> Stanley, this is a serious radio program. Now you get with it. Yeah. I am serious. I guarantee you one thing. If this country had a stupid tax, finest blind be in the top bracket. <laughs> Stanley, finest blind 
is a model citizen, unlike some people I know. Yeah, he's an ignorant little idiot. There ain't no need you resort to in a name call. He's a pin-headed idiot. Stanley. Hey, Leonard. Why didn't you tell Fines Black he could kiss my referendum? <laughs> Stanley, you can't say words like that on the radio, man. Darn it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, folks. I don't want to say nothing bad about Hank Hugh boy, but we all hope that year in reform school would have done him some good. He'd come out meaner than Mussolini. You just can't help some people, I reckon. Well, we got time for one more to let it out talk. Hello, you're on the line with Leonard. Let it out. Leonard, Dee Dee Snavely again. Well, what's the matter this time, Dee Dee? Leonard, can something be done about those hobos under the interstate bridge? Yeah, down there underneath that overpass. Oh, Leonard is getting so crowded you can't even dump your garbage there anymore. <laughs> and stink, stink. God almighty, it stinks. You can smell it in Coweta County. And Leonard, there's enough soap in this world to keep everybody clean. Am I wrong? Uh, no. No, I believe you're right, baby. And instead of finding the store, my husband or our goes out there and drinks with them. Uh, he is, uh, is that where our R spotted that unidentified flying Mexican dude? <laughs> no, it isn't, and it's real wide of you to bring it up. Well, I just want to follow up. We do feel 
feel that you've been somewhat overzealous for the protection of your chicken. Where is my strict line? <laughs> Please, for God, don't tell me I am out. <laughs> Mrs. Burris, in fact, there are those of us at the Humane Society who feel that you enjoy poisoning dogs. I will kill him, Raven. He has hit my strict line. And we're well aware of your bitter pill. That's trick nine lace biscuit rolled up into a nice and little dough balls. Hello? Stanley, it's me, honey. It's Aunt Pearl. 
as a young girl can be foolish. You always was too good for me, wasn't you, Judge? You just too good for me. Well, that's all right. I took it. Then he went and sent my favorite nephew, Stanley, to reform school. <coughs> and for what? Spray paint and stop signs. So, Judge, you might as well tell him he ain't ever been the same. I told you then I was going to sing over your grave when you die. And Judge, I feel a song coming on. <laughs>
Yeah, I had to nuzzle up to your only housekeeper. <laughs> you, you lined up. She thought I was in love. <laughs> I kept it up. I kept it up until I got a copy of all her keys <coughs> and all my information, bit by bit. You know, like her schedule and your schedule. <coughs> and that one hour, that one hour on a Wednesday morning, you were all alone. <laughs> She'd gone out to buy groceries. Yeah, I found out about that. I set you up. She parked across from taking the wig in there, and I just waited. When I seen you long to go into that store, I done a beeline right to your house. I drove right up that curb and driveway, walked right through your goddamn front door, right upstairs to your bedroom. All you could do is lay in your half paralyzed ass and stare. But you knew what I was there for. You knew, didn't you? Man, it was hell getting you into that sweet suit. <laughs> <laughs> It was worth it. Do you want to know what my favorite part was? Huh? Do you want to know what my favorite part was? Your honor? When I pulled out that syringe and you started pleading with me, you pleading with me, and all it took to finish you off was a few little air bubbles right in the vein. A few little air bubbles. Stroke. I guess we're even. And why don't I feel like it? I just might turn myself in. Oh, I can hear him now. Wouldn't everybody be surprised? I hear him say, well, who would have thought that Stanley B. Miller would have had the brains to pull this off? Good afternoon, Tuna. <coughs> this is Thurston Wheelis, and this is the Wheelis Struvy Midday Report. First off in the news, there's going to be a meeting of the smut snatchers of the new order this afternoon at the Coweta Baptist Church starting at about 5 o'clock. Now radio station OKKK OK is going to carry that meeting live. So you tune in. Now the smut snatchers latest project is cleaning up those dictionaries down at the Tuna High School. And they say <coughs> If you know of a word that has questionable value, or if you know of a word that you feel just should not be in the dictionary, or if you just want your, don't want your child around that word, bring that word with you to the meeting. Bring it to the meeting. The Reverend Spike says he'll consider each word <coughs> on a word by a word basis. <laughs> well, now I want to tell you folks, we got something really special this afternoon here at radio station OKKK. We have a senior from Tuna High School. She is the daughter of Hank and Bertha Buehmiller, Miss Charlene Buehmiller. Now, Charlene is the winner of this year's annual Havelina Club's Poetry Writing Contest. And if she wins next month in Wichita Falls,
still be going on to the national competition held up in Butte, Montana, come this February. <laughs> Lord, why the hell they want to have it there, I'll never know. But anyway, Charlene says her poem registers her love and admiration for him. So here's Charlie now. My tuna by Charlene D. Miller. My tuna, oh my tuna, it's the only place I know. I've often thought of leaving you, but don't know where I go. For Paris has no barbecue, and Rome just can't compare to a lovely Texas sunset where the dust is in your hair. And tuna, oh my tuna, it's such fun on Friday night when the Jaguars lose another game and everybody fights. And I love you when you're frozen, and I love you when you're dry. And in April, when the pollen is so thick, it makes you cry. But tuna, oh my tuna, please stay just the way you are. Because I think just the world outside of tuna is bizarre. Wait. Wait. Thank you, sweetheart. Wait. Now, that was really good. Doesn't that just warm the cockles of your heart? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I gotta tell you, I got a phone call today from Nadine Wooten's mama, Norma. Norma says Nadine is standing out along the highway again with her suitcase. Now, most of you folks know that about this time every year, her Nadine stands out along Route 4 with her suitcase. Now, don't try to pick her up because she'll only tell you she's waiting on Mr. Monty. So we just thought we'd remind you to look out for her, don't run her over, and for goodness sakes, don't try to pick her up. Well, it looks like it's that time of year again. It is, it is. It, it is. is, it is, I'll tell you. Well, folks, next up in the news, Juanel Rainey's not dead. Nope, she's not. She's not, she's not. As you know, Juanel's been in the hospital with a combination of fatal diseases for the last eight months. I don't know how many diseases did she have. Well, I don't remember, Arliss, but I do remember it was awful. Oh, it was awful. It was awful. I thought she was going to die. Yep. She thought she was going to yep. die. Hell, we all thought she was going to die. We did. We did. We did. We did. We did. We did. But she didn't. No, nope, she didn't. She didn't, and she's home, and she said, everybody drop by, give her a ring. She's not dead. She's okay. She is. She is. She is. She is. She is. <laughs> now, folks. <laughs> It's time for a little culture. Now, keeping up with the government's new policy to allow private enterprise to help contribute to American artistic needs, radio station OKKK is proud to present the Weekly Art Minute. And this week's guest is none other than Tuna's own R.R. Snaley. What you got for us today, R.R.? Honky Tonk Angels. Honky Tonk Angels, take it away, RR. Well, I got to warm up first, Arliss. <laughs> now, hurry up, RR. You only have 40 seconds left. <laughs> well, thank you, RR. Your minute is up. <laughs> Wasn't that something? Wasn't that something? I tell you, for an old coot who sees unidentified flying chalupas, he plays a mean fiddle. Boy, he does, he does. He does, he does. <laughs> oh, man. Next up, Maxine Bovine, yeah. reigning this tune in the Miss Texas pageant, has had her run a real bad luck. It seems her talent competition has gone over by 20 seconds. As you all know, Maxi does the famous scarlet hair, I'll never eat a root again scene. And just as she got that root to her lips, the buzzer went off and 
they say mess it through a wall I fit and is still in the hospital recovering from shock. Now we spoke to her chaperone, Mildred Jean Perkins, and she said Max will be there for that swimsuit competition tomorrow night. And she's got that body hair problem under control. Oh, all right. that gal's a trooper. Oh my God. <laughs> and now from the National News Desk. Nuclear accident perils, millions in seven states. Texas not included. All right. That's all the news we got for you, but don't touch that dial. Don't touch that dial. Get away from it. Get away from it because Tuna Speaks is next.
The difference is ours is one of moderation. It entails learning the following Spanish phrases. Let me see. Habla usted English? Which means you speak English. And cuanto? Which means how much? Donde puedo cambiar este cheque? Which is where can I cash this traveler's check? And, por favor, envíeme un botón de par a regular mi equipo para Which is, please send me a boy for my luggage. And the last one, the very last one, is no he pido esto, which is, I didn't order this. <laughs> now that's all the Spanish any red blood America are feel obligated to learn. And now let's just see the newspaper make fun of that. Well, I see he's still not here, so I'm just going to forge ahead. Now we need to send out a snack squad. Well, we do. We need to send out a book statue squad to the Tuna High School Library and check those dictionaries. Now we have a new list of words which we have declared possibly offensive or misunderstandable to the free college student. And those words are hot, hooker, coke, clap, deflower, ball, knock, and nuts. <laughs> After much prayer and soul searching with the Lord, we have decided not to include the word snatch on this year's list. Now we know some of you have very strong feelings about the word snap, but we just can't afford to change the letterhead at this time. <laughs> well, here he is. I do hereby turn over this meeting to our honorable president, the Reverend Spike. Oh, well, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Folks, I am so sorry, but I am so late. But let's just get right down to business. Now, we're going to send out a book snatching squad to the Tuna High oh, School Library. Oh, 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 I've already told them that. Well, that's all the fun of being president, Pierre, is getting to send out the snack artist. Well, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Please don't. Well, all right. We have a new communique on our bilingual oh, education oh, oh, program. Oh, I've already told them that too. Well, you just told them everything, didn't you? Well, what did you want me to do for 15 minutes while you weren't here? Sing show tunes? I am not going to have this partial thing with you right here in front of all these people. Uh, uh, radio people are here? Well, so they are. Hello, Artis. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. Are we ready with that book when you look at Of course. Yeah, we're ready. I tell you what, you just set it up right back there, and when you're ready, you just sort of wave your. Oh, <laughs> you're ready now. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I'm ready. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Are we live? Oh. This is a reverend's box. And I want to say, I say, I just want to say a few words. A few words about a friend of mine and a friend of Tunes. Ross Stoneboat spent his whole life in service to his community, his country, and his Lord. And we're sure that when that robe is called up yonder, He'll be there. He was a judge who made hay while the sun shined. But always, and I say always, let a smile be his umbrella. He always kept his sunny side up. And he always seen the silver lining behind every cloud. He was a judge who took no wooden nickels, nor threw caution to the wind. He always looked before he left it 
and he never got in over his head. No! He kept his head when all about him was losing theirs. He kept a stiff upper lip. His nose to the wheel. About this man, we can truly say he was one of a kind. A jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. <laughs> he was one for all, and all for one, and to his own self truth. And I want to tell you this. He, he done it his way. He was a serious-minded judge who let bygones be bygones, but remember the Alamo. <laughs> About this man, we can truly say he was a crane and tuned his car. He fought fire with fire and kept the home fires burning. And when he couldn't stand the heat, he got out of the kitchen. He would, he would walk that extra mile. And he would walk it softly. And he carried a big stick. He was a pet. A man's man, early to bed, early to rise. He laid his cards on the table, gathered at the river, and brung in them sheep. Hunger was his best pickle. What the hell does that mean? Shut up, Vera. <laughs> he was a judge who wouldn't fire till he seen the whites of their eyes. But he whistled a happy little tune. <laughs> Praise God and pass that ammunition. For he had not yet begun to fight. For never, ever, ever did I ever hear a man say, Die! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just did. <laughs> now he was a fine, upstanding <laughs> civil servant. Practice what he preached, put his best foot forward, and his money where his mouth was. <laughs> now it ain't easy. <laughs> you think this is easy? <laughs>
for a life of crime. You know how much money the state has spent on you, boy, to rehabilitate you? And just look at you. You're what we call a conviction. Hey. Hey, hey. You gonna charge me with anything? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna charge your ass. But first, I want to talk to you about this. What are you doing with a hypodermic needle in your car, Stanley? Are you doing drugs, boy? Come over here. Come over here and look at my arms. Come on, look at them. You can look as close as you want to. You can put a magnifying glass up these arms. Ain't no needles been in my arm. I want to know what you're doing with a needle in your car. Because my mama's a diabetic. Mm -hmm. And I carry an extra needle in case she has a bit. <laughs> but there ain't been nothing in that needle but air, Sheriff. <laughs> nothing but air. Anything wrong with having a hypodermic needle full of air, Sheriff? Is that against the law? Well, you just think you're real smart. You know. You just think you're real smart. Guess what? I got a witness. Can I stay up just a little while and listen to you? 
Radio? Jody, now you've heard me. Oh, I don't want to stay up all night. Just a, just a half an hour. Jody. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, honey. I don't <coughs> want you coming downstairs in the middle of the night, sleeping on the couch, leaving that radio on all night. Okay, Mama. Good night, baby. Good night, Mama. You're gonna get us some hot water. Jody, honey, the puppy's whining. Well, I'm taking care of it. Jody, put the puppy out now. All right, Mama. And say your prayers. Oh, we go, Mama. I'm listening. Thank you for the puppy. <laughs> and thank you for summer vacation. And God bless Mom. Amen. And thank you. Leave that puppy outside.
you and Mogan David. <laughs>
Thank you, y'all fellas. Can't find the news. So we're just going to say goodnight to you. Good night. And we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. But until then, remember our motto at Radio OKKK. If you can find some place you like better than Tuna, move! Go on! Get out of here! Get gone!